that lies so unapologetically black and free and queer. So here we are uh, with Chemical Hearts. I enjoyed this film a lot. Yeah. Uh, yay. It's another film that shows a different side to teenagers because we're so used to like the mean girls approach. And this one is actually very smart. And I love the whole, the chemical reactions about love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you guys play um, teenagers. <laughs> First of all, how is it to go back in time just for, you know, as actresses to play these young characters? Um, you know, it, so I, I've been talking about the fact that La is so unapologetically black and free and queer and a creative and takes up space. And I honestly wish I would have been more of that. I feel like, you know, what I would have told my younger self was like to love myself deeply. Um, and you know, I feel like that would have probably been a sort of uh, a beautiful evolution of self to love yourself that for that that age, like when everything is sort of changing and things are happening and you're feeling all kinds of crazy at the same time. You have crushes and, you know, falling in love with Cora in the film is like one of those things that you don't really get to see. You don't get to hear a young brown queer person expressing themselves so freely around this love interest that they have as well. But it's not even really a big issue. It's not even addressed. That's what's cool That's about it, it right? right? It's it's that there is a little bit of struggle that that is in the film with my character figuring out how to come to terms with it. But other than that, we're loving each other and we're kissing each other and we're holding hands and we're exclaiming our love for each other so freely and no one bats an eye, um, which is how it would be. You know, your closest friends, just, just, they just want you to be happy. And if you're being weird and gross and kissing at the table, they're going to poke fun at you no matter what. Like it's, it's, so, it's that type of freedom to, to be um, just, just kind of cute, gushy, chills down your spine love is, is, uh, is something I wish we could see more of. Yeah, it feels like we're like normalizing mm -hmm. this kind of love, you know, to see that and not be in conflict with the world is really refreshing. Do you think the more we see uh, ourselves represented in that manner that the future generations will, you know, have less inclination to judge by color or by gender or, you know, because uh, another film I wanted to talk, or not talk about, mentioned about smart teenage films is uh, Words on Bathroom Walls. And it's their positive imagery of teens. And hopefully, I mean, what I hope is the more we see of that, instead of the Mean Girls version, Absolutely. maybe people will grow up thinking like, normalize it basically. I haven't seen the film that you're talking of, or that you're speaking of, but I, I, I identify with what you're saying on a whole other level. I feel like the representation in like the multifaceted, multidimensional characters, the more, the deeper and the truer the stories. And usually that should come from us, you know, mm -hmm. that the, the deeper and the truest, the truer the stories, the more impact it's gonna make on young people's lives if they see it. And we really have the power to sort of control a narrative, you know, that doesn't perpetuate to the likeness of beauty, but to the likeness of human, you know? Um, and so that's, that, that's, I'm very passionate about what you just said. I really think that that has, because like, I, I know that what I've watched growing up has had a major impact on the way that I see the world. And also just like, even in regards to mistakes I've made, you know, that, that this is probably what was told to me via repetitive imaging. Yep. Um, so yeah, I'm so with you on that. And I wanna ask you, Lily Reinhardt um, produced this film mm -hmm. and it's obvious why, because probably Hollywood doesn't come to her with, you know, with substance uh, for roles. So she probably went out and looked for something herself and it's a great role for her. I mean, it says, you know, it advances her career as an actress to show that she's got depth you know, coming off such a popular show and that she has more to offer as an actress. Do you guys think about that? You know, finding uh, projects that speak to you and will also 
help you in your career to prove that you're a, a valuable actress that's needed and your voice needs to be heard? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, all the time, especially as, as two brown women. We have to fight so many levels of discrimination and that includes in the roles that are offered to us and, and the limiting nature of, um, of what we do that, that sometimes these people can only see us as, um, as, as, as fuller versions of ourselves if someone in, before us did it. Mm -hmm. But because no one before us did it, we have to be the people, the first people to break those walls. And that's, that's, um, it's hard and it's exhausting. And I think, uh, you know, we're, we're always seeking things that just make us more human and not just caricatures of what a, a, a non-white person looks or sounds like. <laughs> right, right. Well, it's interesting that you asked this question because, um, as a person who the, the stage is my foundation, the theater is my foundation, I find that there's so much revolutionary pieces of art in the theater mm -hmm. that if they only made their way onto the screens, you know, the, it, the amount of impact that it would have on culture and consciousness and the subconscious um, to really sort of be catalysts for the conversations of, of changing humanity. Um, so as an artist, and as a black artist, it is, it, it, you know, as a first generation American artist, it is a, it's very important for me to be a part of roles that are changing the world and changing the way we see the world. So in the movie, they talk about love, but in the sense of how our chemo, how our bodies work when yeah. you fall in love and you have heartbreak and it's kind of cool the way they do it. Right. But you also come out thinking, Man, high school kids should just avoid love, period, because it, just, <laughs> it complicates things too much. And actually, that's my, that was my view in high school, just watching. That, that was movie. my view, too. <laughs> like, oh, it's too much drama. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you guys about, think about the movie kind of taking, it, uh, uh, taking love in a different, uh, showing it in a different way? Yeah, I mean, yeah, love is, can, can bring a lot of drama to your life, and it can be hard, but I think there's also something really... Um, amazing about allowing yourself to be open with a person and vulnerable and raw and um, imperfect. And so as scary as love can be, um, it, it can also be really fulfilling. And I only hope that high school kids can find uh, relationships. Like I, I honestly think reflect the movie between core and law, one that's healthy and um, and and safe meaningful so meaningful. meaningful because it's easy to fall in love with people for the wrong reasons mm. let's also point that out <laughs> <laughs> you know like it's easy to be infatuated with someone for like all of the wrong reasons and it's it's it it will behoove of you to actually identify which one that is from an early uh, or sometimes it's too complicated to even think about that. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I as, as a teenager, I felt like I could fall in love with lots of different kind of people, you know, that I connected to. Um, so it wasn't something that I would shy away from, even though that sometimes it's incredibly painful, but know that you will get through it. I think that those are like the themes of the movie. Get, mm -hmm. You'll get through, you'll move through the pain, you know?